This is your dose of daily market wisdom with master trader Nick Santiago. Starting from humble beginnings, Nick has been beating the markets for over two decades. He shares with you his take on the profitable trades that will have you moving towards financial freedom in no time at all. To see an in-depth review of his track record and much more, go to inthemoneystocks.com. Welcome. This is your daily dose of daily market wisdom with master trader Nick Santiago. I'm Kerry Lutz. Today is 11 12 21. Make of it what you like. Show number 339. Well, Nick, uh, hey, it's Friday. And what could be wrong with the world? Uh, the, the Friday effect. That's what I call it the Friday effect. Every Friday, we seem to go up into the weekend. And that's no uh, exception today. Markets finished higher really across the board. Uh, the volume was extremely light, and that has been the case really since the October rally has begun. And here we are in uh, almost uh, the middle of November, and that's still the case. So uh, markets, again, have another positive Friday by the close. And it's exactly what you said. It used to be once upon a time before we had such outwardly controlled, manipulated markets, higher volume with higher prices was bullish. Now low volume and high prices is bullish. It's kind of been stood up on its head. Yeah, so ever since we hit the uh, 2009 bottom in on March 6th, uh, 2009, the markets now go up on light volume. And when they fall, they, they fall on heavy volume. I tell all my members to watch volume trends every day. I tell my uh, trading room members the same thing. And, and it, it really, really plays out that way. So a little hidden secret. Uh, but, uh, you know, when you get light volume, give the market the upside bias. When we fall on heavy volume, that's when you got to be really on guard. And this, to me, uh, I don't know about you, is really is really an indicator, a major warning sign that markets are not functioning the way they were intended. Yeah, you know, the, the one thing I, I always tell everybody about is when you put in a long sideways consolidation, if you break out on volume, that consolidation pattern has some legs to it. That's going to make a significant move. These days, you know, we break out on light volume and we just continue going up on light volume. It's not like it was. So, um, you know, just just you have to adjust with the markets and you have to adjust and, and realize these uh, little subtle changes that occur. But, um, they, you know, they're very, very important to follow. Hey, totally, totally. Uh, we had a, uh, a fan uh, write us an email with a chart saying that, uh, hey, it looks, like, uh, it looks like silver has done a reverse head and shoulders, and now it's breaking out. Uh, we didn't get a chance to talk earlier in the week, but this certainly appears to be the case, doesn't it? Yeah, I actually put it on my Twitter feed the day I thought it was going to occur, and it didn't happen that day, but it did happen um, yesterday. So yesterday we had silver uh, confirm an inverse, an inverse head and shoulder pattern. Target takes you just above $26, and uh, that pattern is in full steam right now. So, you know, um, the pattern can always fail. A move below 2285 I think, on uh, SLV would cause a failure on silver futures. Um, the number would be a little bit different. It would probably be more along the lines of around 2480. But um, yeah, this this is a very, very good pattern right now. I don't see any problems with it. The one thing you have to watch for is next week is options expiration. And gold and, and silver, for some reason, have a tendency of uh, turning down during options X. So uh, just be a little bit aware of that we have a November options expiration for the stock market. So uh, again, uh, that pattern is in full effect and the silver futures chart Part takes you to around eight uh, twenty eight fifty. Hey, so that's an interesting thing. Options X coming up. Uh, what we've seen usually when there's the quad witch, that's when the metals have been getting hit. Yes. A regular plain old options X. Uh, your take? What do you uh, think? I wouldn't expect it. I'm not expecting it, but you never know. I, I I never know what these people have in store. <laughs> there's a lot of game playing. You got to remember the institutions have a lot of work to do this week because they want to get bonuses at the end of the year. So they're going to flip stocks up, down, and every which way they can to create um, some profits for themselves. Remember the volume trends when they're light like this, um, you know, they're not generating a lot of capital. So the institutions out here are going to play a lot of institutional game playing next week. In general, you should watch out for a lot of rumors, watch out for a lot of ridiculous upgrades and downgrades. And, and it's just the way it goes. Um, you know, that that's just a typical options expiration. And uh, next Friday, not next Friday, which I believe is going to be the 19th will be options expiration for November. All right. Hey, and just one other thing, uh, you called that uh, gold was going to at least hit 1860. 
and here we are. Yeah, yeah, that was, um, you know, I talked about that last week. I said, all we got to do is close above this level. Then we should run up to 1860, 1865. Today, uh, gold futures trading at, at, at 1867. So it, it actually exceeded my, my number by a little bit there. Now I just want to see if gold can continue higher because it looks very strong, but it, it is slightly overbought. So it may need to consolidate a little bit. And if it does that, um, that's fine too. But overall, um, when I look at the gold pattern right now, it looks really, really positive, and um, I'm going to give it the benefit of the doubt that it can go higher. So there's some big patterns in play there for gold, and um, we have a big weekly pattern also. If we could close uh, probably around 1875 to 1880 on a weekly close, meaning next week, you know, gold triggers a big inverse head and shoulder pattern on a big time frame. And that could take gold to the moon. So it's really firmed up quite a bit. I'm watching these patterns closely to see if they trigger. And, um, you know, that actually that pattern would take gold to a double top or even a new all time high. So it is quite something. It's very exciting to see the metals come back to life. And like I said, you watch one level. When one level breaks, then you go to the next level. When that level breaks, you go to the next level. And these patterns unfold themselves. You don't always have to be, you know, somebody forecasting it's going to do this or that. Just let the charts tell you what to do. Yeah, the charts don't lie. We know that Bitcoin made an all-time high. Now it's pulling back down a little bit. 70K or bust, huh? Yeah, we got close to the 70K level, though, on Bitcoin. I believe on the Bitcoin futures, it got to 69,355, and now it's pulled back. It, it, You know what happens? It just gets a little bit overbought and extended on the bigger time frames, and it can't go more. So um, right now, there's still no problem with Bitcoin. I think it's still bullish. All right. Well, we'll leave it at that. And if you want to find out more, figure out how Nick does it, learn how to do it yourself, how he's been beating the average for decades, the averages for decades, just go over to inthemoneystocks.com. Check out the Twitter feeds at ITMS, at NickSantiago01, and at Kerry Lutz. Emails are always welcome at kl at kerryletz.com. Nick, have a great weekend. We'll talk to you Monday. Thank you, Kerry. Have a great weekend. This, this is, is your, your dose, dose of daily, daily market, market wisdom, wisdom with master, master trader, trader Nick, Nick Santiago. Santiago. Starting from humble beginnings, Nick has been beating the markets for over two decades. He shares with you his take on the profitable trades that will have you moving towards financial freedom in no time at all. To see an in-depth review of his track record and much more, go to InTheMoneyStocks.com.